piracy. It's been around since Jack Sparrow was a baby animatronic, but never in all my years on the salty old brine had I considered the fact that pirate books might exist. Bootleg books. Booklegs. While I haven't had the internet my whole life, one thing that has remained constant is cheeky bootlegs. Be it copied Amiga computer game discs, dubbed tapes of cool albums as a teenager, or that one VHS my friend Damien's dad kept under his sofa and we'd watch when he went out. It was called Hot Rackets. Piracy is a strange industry. Yes, it's inherently bad. It deprives people of their incomes, their livelihoods. It deprives creators, artists, and Metallica of their money. But it also sometimes offers their work to people who wouldn't usually have access, be it due to geographical restrictions or prohibitively expensive software licenses, Adobe? Yarr. In our modern world of perfect digital copies, the idea of a bootleg or pirate book seems quaint or old-fashioned, but somehow delightful. So imagine my surprise when I found out that here in India, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm in Mumbai. Here in Mumbai, bootleg books are a real thing. So I went deep undercover as a white guy in India to find out what bounteous bootleg booty I could get my hands on. And believe me, I don't like that sentence either. The amount of books available from street vendors is incredible. Thousands of titles from new to secondhand to those of questionable origin. Where do they go at night? All lovingly displayed like a curbside bookstore. So after browsing and marveling endlessly at a myriad of stalls, eventually I made my move. I bought Austin Kleon's Steal Like an Artist. Believe me, the irony is not lost on me. For one reason, and one reason only. Because back here in my apartment in Amsterdam, I own the original copy of Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon that I purchased with my hard earned cash. So we can compare it with the moody copy. Your classic YouTube style unboxing. Unboxing. <laughs> Coming up, we'll compare the physical differences between the moody book and the legit one. We'll see what the difference in cost is. Next, we'll hear thoughts from some people in Mumbai about their experiences with pirate books. Then we'll get into a little bit of pirate book history and hear from some successful authors. And finally, we can pack all this away, go home and have a lovely cup of tea. Chapter markers are below so you can skip ahead, you short attention span mother Well, first off, there's uh, some pretty obvious differences. Evidently, the Moody Printing Factory doesn't do irregular book sizes, so this one is square, this one's a rectangle. But it is also quite nicely wrapped in plastic, so let's get into it. I mean, it's, it's no Apple device, but you gotta love it. Bit wasteful. Here we go. Does have the quite nice matte finish. It's hard to know how they've fitted it to this size. Like the backs are sort of the, the same size, but on the front, this is a circle, and this is like a circle that someone's clicked on the bottom right-hand corner and sort of just dragged it to stretch it to fill the, the size. But that is that really important, or is it what's inside that counts? Now, this is sort of an interesting book to have chosen because uh, as well as like a lot of text, this has loads of illustration, loads of fully black pages with white diagrams and stuff on them. Also, it's printed on quite nice quality paper. It's got a little flap on the front like that. So those types of things are gonna stand out super easily. Obviously, there's no flap on the front. Who expected it? Uh, but let's get inside. Well, it's sort of as expected, I think. The paper is clearly very thin, very cheap, quite, not bad quality paper, but yeah, bad quality paper. The text is the text. 
And I think the place where it really stands out, as expected, is the bits where it's a fully blacked out page. So here's the original there. You can see that dark blacks on white. And here is the uh, Captain Jack Sparrow version. Uh, sort of like the ink is running out in your inkjet printer. PC load letter? What the f does that mean? What does it come down to, right? Why are you buying this book? And who is buying this book? This book cost me $12.95 US dollars. Whereas this one cost me 100 rupees, which uh, is the equivalent of just over one euro or dollar or pound. Are we still doing pounds? Is that relevant anymore? Brexit! Comparing it to international prices is sort of pointless. That's not a useful metric, is it? What is useful is to compare it to how much it would cost if you bought it legitimately in India. So, I did some research. This is a computer. What's a computer? On Amazon.in, it is priced at 449 rupee, which is over four times as much. So you're getting it for a quarter of the price. What is really interesting, however, about this is that there's uh, some reviews and some of the pictures feature a book of this shape and size, not the official square version. So some of them are like just very complimentary about the book itself, but then a few of them say the printing is very bad, pages missing, the quality is not good. Evidently, the version that is available on Amazon.in may not actually be this official version. It just could be more of these at four times the price. And then really, what are you doing? So I did look on some other sites. Uh, I found a, another website called Flipkart and there is available for 180 euro. This was 100 euro. So we're in the same ballpark here and it is of the a correct size. This is a sort of awkward one to have bought because I would say that the illustrations and stuff are arguably the, the meat of the book. So to have them represented in a quite sad format stretched to the wrong aspect ratio is not what the artist intended. However, I did buy uh, another book, Atomic Habits. It's a book that has been on my reading list and now I will obviously go out and immediately buy it for full RRP tax deductible for the video. But this one is entirely, aside from a few diagrams here and there, is entirely text. And when you look at that, yes, it is printed on the cheaper paper and maybe it's not the exact right ratio. I don't know, the font looks like it might be a tiny bit stretched, but in terms of like reading, you get all the information across and I even bought it for hundred euro and they gave me a free little bookmark. That's what's so interesting about this. It's not like some guy opening a suitcase and being like, I've got secret books. It's very out in the open, but I guess it does afford people the ability to read these books who might not be able to afford them or access them in that part of the world. I did a, <laughs> a study. I posted on the Mumbai thread of Reddit, which already is clearly not a cross section of people that live in India and Mumbai. It's a very specific set of people, not dissimilar to the one yammering away down the camera now, but I was interested to know if people had bought these books, why they'd bought them. And most importantly, if having bought the books, they then went on to support the artists and authors by buying their next book from an official outlet or supporting them in some other way. And the, the results were pretty pleasing. For example, some people said, I started with these books, but now I buy originals. Bought a lot when I was younger and couldn't afford to buy new. Used to buy them, the content is the same. The book is fresh at much cheaper rate than what publications are extorting. Okay. I see no reason to buy OG books unless I want to support the author. And I think that is really it, isn't it? I grew up reading pirated books. As I grew up, I saved money to buy books. Eventually, after becoming financially independent, I buy books from Amazon now. And when you think about it, to some degree, what is the difference between buying one of these and me just lending this to a friend who then goes on to buy Austin Kleon's other books, which I also have. Hey, what's up, Austin? So where does this leave us? Well, book piracy isn't exactly a new thing. I mean, I was just excited that the physical copy was new, but 
E-books have been the subject of much furore since the Kindle and the early 2010s, when suddenly books were being shared on the internet in a way that echoes in almost every single way the MP3 file sharing of the late 90s and early 2000s. And it kind of comes down to the individual authors and artists. Some were all right with it, others not so much. Hey! For example, best-selling Brazilian author Paulo Coelho said, the more often we hear a song on the radio, the keener we are to buy the CD. It's the same with literature. The more people pirate a book, the better. If they like the beginning, they'll buy the whole book the next day. And while that isn't necessarily 100% true, there's certainly something to it, you know? The lending the book to someone, the getting the first copy pirated and then buying the future ones after that. And what do you know? Look what is available from one of the Mumbai booksellers that I was walking past. I guess that's a win for Paolo. We've seen these massive shifts in the music industry over the last 10, 20 years, where now no Nobody buys physical CDs and a band's recorded music is just sort of an advertisement in a way for you to go and see them live, buy their merch and like support them financially in other ways. That industry has had to adapt to some degree, but with authors it's less clear I suppose what the other income streams might be. If you're a really big author then maybe you're cool with people pirating your books. Even nerd favourite Neil Gaiman chimed in in the 2010s. Places where I was being pirated, um, particularly Russia, where people were translating my stuff into Russian and spreading it out in the world, I was selling more and more books. People were discovering me through being pirated. Um, and then they were going out and buying the real books. And when a new book would come out in Russia, it would sell more and more copies. I, and I thought that was fascinating. So it's not exactly a black and white issue. You can certainly start from piracy is theft, theft is wrong, don't do it. But it feels like there's a little bit more nuance to that. And don't get me wrong, not all authors are in favour of this. Another popular author by the name of Lilith St. Crow posted a blog post in 2011, which has since been removed, but the internet never forgets, and really disagreed with the notion of pirating and sharing, to the point where she says, e-piracy is not a black and white issue, you say. F that. Taking without paying is called stealing. Piracy is people stealing my f***ing books and it doesn't get much more black and white than stealing is wrong. So I guess what it comes down to is how the author or the artist feels about that. If you discount all the other people involved in the production chain of books, I'm sure the publishers and the editors and the people who run the printing presses might be a, a little bit mad if their workload dips massively. And so I suppose to sum up, the only real way we can know is to ask each individual artist, which I guess means I have to track down the very artist that I'm stealing from to find out if this counts as good theft or bad theft. Well, he seems like a nice guy. I'm sure it'd be cool if you buy it as a gift or a friend or join his newsletter. I couldn't find anything concrete on the subject from Cleon. However, he did post a tweet in March of 2022 that said, if you pirated Steel Like an Artist when you were young and broke, that was a great time to pay me back and get a fancy hardcover. So, you know, I'm not saying he's okay with it, but he's aware of it. So what do you think? Piracy is theft. Buying one of these books is the same as me stealing a handbag or a car, which I must underline I have never done. Or is it actually a gateway into finding new artists, new things you enjoy? Is it basically the situation of, hey, if you can't afford it, cool, but when you can, then start paying for it. Give back to the artists, invest in creators that you like. While we're on the subject, why not click like and subscribe, but one of these days I'll monetize this mother in channel. In the meantime, I would love to hear your thoughts on this whole thing. Pirate books. Would you buy them? Have you bought them? Do you like them? Who are you? Goodbye. See you next time. Remember to like and subscribe. Write something in the comments. Send this video to a friend. Share and share alike. Goodbye.
Oh, hey, and uh, if you've enjoyed this video, then maybe you'll like some of the other completely random, unrelated stuff on this channel. Just sort of stuff that interests me, really. Recently, I made a video about Twitter and Mastodon. It's linked somewhere around here. See you next time. Let's have a little look, shall we?